circular. Or rotating motion. And so this, all of this stuff that we cover is going to be over the course of the next couple of weeks. And that is because basically every linear physics term has a rotational or angular equivalent or analog So for example, the, I guess we can start simply. So we had things like position or distance or displacement. So on this side, we'll do the linear term. And over here, we'll do the angular term. So for position, or displacement, We had the vector like x or y or z, depending on which direction we were going in. And then for the angular equivalent of that is going to be theta. So what, whatever angle you are on on a circle. We had linear velocity. That was represented by the vector lowercase v. And we're going to have angular velocity, which is an omega, which you can just work, write as like a curly w. We had linear acceleration, A, and we're going to have angular acceleration alpha. And then over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're also going to build up all of the other things we've seen. So after we did kinematic equations, we started talking about force. And that was a capital F with the vector hat. There's also going to be an angular force, which is called torque. And we just learned about momentum, lowercase p. And there's going to be an angular momentum, which we represent with a capital L.
And so these angular terms are going to be a bit different, but a lot of the same problem solving techniques that you developed so far are going to translate to these angular terms. So I guess on this left side, we can relate all of the angular terms to the, each other. And then on the right, we'll relate the angular term to the linear term. So just like there were relationships between position, velocity, and acceleration, there's relationships between angular position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. So we had So just like we had velocity is delta x over delta t in the linear case, we're going to have our angular velocity is going to be change in theta over change in time. And then we had our acceleration was <clears throat> change in velocity over change in time. So our angular acceleration is going to be change in angular velocity over change in time. And then you remember there was a set of equations that related all of your velocities, uh, accelerations, and positions, and time together, right? So you had those kinematic equations for linear velocity or linear motion, and you'll have kinematic equations for angular motion or rotational motion. So those three kinematic equations are the same, you just replace the linear term with the angular term. So <clears throat> delta theta equals omega initial t plus one half alpha t squared, omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha delta theta and omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. And so again, all of the intuition that you've built up to do your kinematic equations will apply to these rotational kinematic equations. The big caveat here is that there's only going to be rotation in one direction in this class. So you won't ever have to, like in linear motion, you had to find the time and the y and then plug it into the x. There won't be anything like that uh, for these rotational kinematics. Okay, so that's all of the terms and how they relate to each other. So now let's see how we can relate the angular term to the linear term. And so you can see this if you look at the units of these things, and that's how I remember it. So there's going to be a relationship between theta and um, position. 
omega and velocity and alpha and acceleration. And that relationship is going to be related to some radius r. So if we were to draw a circle and it has some radius r, then the angle theta we could find by calculating this distance or measuring this distance x and dividing it by the radius of the circle. And another way to think about this is you've already seen something like this. So you know that the circumference of a circle is two pi r, right? So the circumference of a circle is just measuring all the way around the circle. So what is the, so if you go all the way around a circle, that's 360 degrees or two pi radians. So this equation is basically two pi equals C over R, where two pi is the angle delta theta, C is the X and the radius is still just R. And so that, kind of brings us to uh, the final thing to note that these, so theta is measured in radians. So that means that omega, the angular velocity is measured in radians per second. And then alpha, the angular acceleration is me measured in radians per second squared. So in all of the stuff that we're gonna do for the next couple of weeks, you need to, if you're given an angle in degrees, you'll need to convert it to radians before you get a final answer when you do your calculations. <laughs>